Okay, we are at 16.8 capacitors with dielectrics. Um, let's go to the uh, PowerPoint. And here we have a, a, uh, a charge capacitor. Notice it's not hooked up to a battery or anything like that. It's just a charge capacitor with delta V0. Uh, in this case, it shows it as two volts uh, and charge Q0. Now, if we were to put a dielectric, it's a material, it's an insulating material. It could be, uh, you know, like a rubber or plastic or wax paper, uh, mylar. Um, if we were to put a dielectric in between it, now the charge isn't going to change, uh, but the voltage drops. Uh, and the voltage drops according to kappa, the dielectric constant. Um, so delta V is equal to delta V zero divided by uh, K. So in this case, it looks like, or kappa, K, uh, kappa it looks like it's, it's a two because it's it reduced by one half. It was two volts, now it's down to one volt. Um, so, uh, the, uh, so the capacitance uh, is multiplied by, uh, Kappa. So the C is equal to kappa times C zero. So it it increases the capacitance. So if we were to raise the uh, voltage back to its original state uh, to two volts, it would hold uh, it would hold more charge. Um, so that's uh, dielectrics are a way of increasing the charge without having to increase the geometry, you know, either the area or the separation distance. Uh, between the plates. Uh, here are some uh, some uh, uh, some kappa, some dielectric constants uh, for the uh, the uh, di different materials, the dielectric console co constant, and also the dielectric strength in volts per, per meter. Um, so C is equal to epsilon zero uh, area over the distance. Well, for uh, uh, that's C0, that's with no dielectric. If you put a dielectric at C equals kappa epsilon zero times uh, area divided by distance. And you can see air is the dielectric constant is about one. Uh, Bakelite is 4.9, fused quartz 3.78, neoprene rubber 6.7. It just increases the capacitance by this much. Paper 3.7, polystyrene 2.56, pyrex glass. Uh, 5.6 silicon oil, 2.5 strontium titanate is 233. That's significant. Uh, Teflon is 2.1. Uh, vacuum is exactly one, and water is 80. Um, now the breakdown, uh, the dielectric strength. This is these are the volts um, per meter. I mean, and if you have a very small uh, the separation, you're going to have, you know, uh, uh, millimeter separation. So it's going to, uh, have less voltage that it can take. The dielectric strength is where the, the, uh, capacitor will break down and you'll actually run charge through the dielectric. Uh, it, it, it'll basically ruin the the capacitor. Uh, that's why the capacitors that you're going to see in class are all going to have voltage ratings, um, you know, 10 volts, 20 volts, uh, whatever. They're, they'll be stamped on. Uh, besides the capacitance value, they'll have a rating. Um, don't exceed that voltage. So you can see that in air, it's 3 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, Bakelite is 24 times 10 to the 6th. They're all, they're all in the range of 10 to the 6th. Uh, uh, the highest looks like Teflon, 60 times 10 to the 6th, and the lowest looks like air, which is 3 times 10 to the 6th. Uh, probably next would be uh, the strontium titanate and the uh, fused quartz. So the, there's a table of dielectric constants, uh, uh, the kappas, and also the dielectric strength um, volts per meter. Uh, this is a case where uh, that spark happened because it exceeded the three times ten to the six uh, volts per meter for this little little uh, this uh, uh, 
induced voltage, it, it broke down and you get a spark across it. Um, okay, this is the way, uh, it, instead of just uh, parallel plates, usually they have it like this. A tubular capacitor consists of alternating metal foil and paper rolled into a cylinder. Uh, the paper, of course, is a conductor so that the uh, foils won't, uh, won't contact each other. Um, and, and you get a capacitor that way and it saves space. A high voltage capacitor consists of many parallel plates separated by insulating oil. Um, the, um, uh, sometimes they use gas, sometimes they, uh, what is the, uh, um, oh, I don't remember, the uh, uh, SF6, uh, sulfur hexafluoride uh, is used in uh, uh, it, some, some applications. Um, an electrolytic capacitor is a metal, metallic foil and oxide layer. Uh, there's an electrolyte in it. In case now, a lot, electrolytic capacitors are often polarized. A lot of capacitors, it doesn't matter. You can put them one way or another. An electrolytic capacitor, it does. It is polarized. Uh, it has a direction. There's a plus and a minus. You have to be careful with those. We have ruined some in the past in the lab. Um, but if we use low enough uh, voltages, it shouldn't, shouldn't matter. Uh, okay. Uh, these are some capacitors, different capacitors. Uh, the, uh, there's, if you look at, there's like a little oval can, um, just below it, there's a, a black cylindrical uh, capacitor. You'll see those, one like that. And then the, uh, two black twin cylinders uh, right in the almost in the middle of the picture those are uh, kind of like the capacitors that you'll see and the little uh, you'll see all these little parallel plates uh, multiple parallel plates those are those are uh, it's a variable capacitor so that it, there's a little knob or a little screwdriver knob that you can turn and and it'll it'll engage the plates in and out so that you can increase or decrease the capacitance. Uh, these uh, come from little like old radio tuners where you would tune the uh, capacitor to bring in, uh, you would create a resonant circuit to bring in the uh, radio station that you want to listen to. That would have been one of the applications. Uh, okay, and that's it for capacitors with dielectrics. Uh, I think I've covered um, everything and we're gonna go on with the last uh, I think is the last section on uh, um, uh, the atomic view of uh, atomic description of dielectrics.